All right. So our next speaker is is a is a very famous uh, individual in the data community. She's been an awesome Iron Viz finalist for 2022. Uh, Kimberly Scott is joining us from Australia. She's going to talk to us about her secret sauce. So in this session, Kimberly she's going to is going to share with us her go to checklist on her beautiful design. So how she kind of goes about new Tableau public projects. She's also going to talk talk to us about her Tableau journey and a lesson that she learned that throughout her journey. Uh, with all of her public sort of work and how she got this awesome. So with that, I'm going to pass to you, Emily. Okay, thank you, Fred. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Do you want to share your slides? I will share my slides. I uh, don't know where it is. Hang on. Perfect. We can see Tableau okay. dashboard. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, so thank you for that introduction, Fred. Um, uh, before I jump into it, uh, I just want to kind of explain a little bit more about myself um, for those who don't know me, although you did a really great introduction, Fred. Um, so as Fred said, my name is Kim Lee. Um, I'm currently analytics manager at a company called Lux Asia. Um, they're based in Singapore, but I'm based in, in Melbourne. Um, so I started working in data visualization in my previous role, um, but now I'm lucky enough, um, I get to work on Tableau every day. Um, <clears throat> I'm also currently a Tableau public ambassador. Um, and the things that I do for work are a lot different to what you'll see in my Tableau public profile. Um, and like Fred said, my Tableau public has work has led me to um, this year's IronViz um, finalist um, at the Tableau conference in Las Vegas, um, an experience I won't be forgetting anytime soon. Um, and a quick congratulations to the three new finalists who were announced earlier today. So good luck to, to all three. Um, I'm also passionate about diversity. So um, I currently lead um, the community project Diversity in Data. Um, I co-lead that with um, a couple of others, um, and I recently launched um, a blog which aims to showcase women in data viz. Um, so my two little girls are kind of what drives my passion for, for diversity, um, and in, in particular gender diversity. Um, and a fun fact about me, just because um, I'm a big time space nerd, and I've done many visualizations related to space, um, which you'll also find on my Tableau public profile. So like Fred said, today I'm going to go through some items, um, what I can fit in 20 minutes anyway, um, from my go-to checklist when designing my, my visualization. So I want to draw on some of the lessons that I've learned and the mistakes I've made along the way. Um, and um, so I'm going to share some of my um, go-to design items that hopefully you can use in your personal visits um, in order to stand out from the crowd. And I'll be sharing some examples of my work today um, and all that I share um, are available, available to view and download on Tableau Public. So one thing that's guaranteed to make your viz stand out and to set the tone of your viz um, is a great heading. So for um, item checklist number one, ensure you have a standout heading. So a standout heading um, can, can reel people in, get them excited um, or entice them to engage with your viz. Uh, now, don't be afraid to be as creative as you like with these headings. There are many ways to make titles um, and headings more beautiful. So we can consider matching fonts or typography to our topic, um, although do be careful with copyright. Um, ensure that you're only using fonts that are free for public use. My go-to um, resource for finding fonts is, uh, is Google Fonts, actually. Um, so within Google Fonts, you know, you can type in your heading um, and then you can see and compare which font looks best um, for your heading and which font would actually suit the style of your viz. I will make a note here about website fonts. So if you're using um, a standard text box to create your heading, ensure that your font is um, web safe. Uh, so I've made the mistake in the past of not doing that and things kind of all looked wonky and it didn't look right. Um, so hopefully you won't make the same mistake that I've made. And 
If you're creating your heading in another tool, such as Figma, Photoshop, or even PowerPoint, and, and then importing um, the heading as an image into Tableau, remember to add alt text to the image so that people using screen readers don't miss out on your fabulous headings. Um, so during my Tableau public journey and my learnings, I participated in Makeover Monday a lot, but in the early days, um, my skills were somewhat lacking in terms of design. Um, you know, I had a lot to learn about design. So here um, is a collection of wonderfully boring headings. Um, so the, the, you know, the headings may tell the audience what the viz is about, but uh, I actually don't think any of these headings invite people to, you know, further engage and interact with the viz. So what can we do? Um, so here are some ways and some examples you can make your headings more creative and to stand out. So we can use embellishments to make our headings more interesting. Here in my viz that looks at breastfeeding rates around the world, I've included um, hand-drawn images of flowers to replace the, you know, the OO in the text. Um, and the addition of leaves add further interest. And this is in keeping with the floral theme of the viz um, and the flowers used to depict the breastfeeding rates around the world in the main chart there. The title of the viz is also, you know, a little bit cheeky um, and draws the audience in as well. We can also play with different text sizings. So um, in my IMVIS final, I use two different sizes for the words in the heading um, to kind of create interest and play with, you know, different and different heights and variable heights. Um, the addition of the image also makes the heading stand out as well. For this viz showing um, the journey of Voyager 1 and 2 across our solar system, I was inspired by NASA's um, space tourism posters and um, I created a title here in Figma playing with the different site, different, you know, font sizes, different color. Um, and I um, created the image of Voyager here to incorporate into the, into the heading. You'll also notice that I haven't placed the, the title in the traditional position. So, you know, in the top or the top left of the canvas, um, but there's no mistaking that this is the heading of the viz, you know, the size the embellishments, they all make it stand out, even though it's at the bottom, the bottom of the viz. We can also play with different fonts. So um, I used an out of the ordinary um, font style for the heading of my uh, Matilda effect vid, looking at the forgotten women in science. And I thought that the font fit really well with the theme of the viz. And again, I played with, you know, different font sizing um, and different alignment as well to, to, to try and create some interest. We can also use highlighting to jazz up our titles. So in this viz, looking at women's suffrage around the world, um, I've used highlighting to make my heading stand out. And I've also matched the highlighting and the, um, the heading text to the color scheme of the viz. And the green and the purple really work well together. Um, they're complementary colors as well as, you know, making each of the colors stand out. Um, and the green and the purple are actually the colors of the women's suffrage movement. So again, it makes that connection to the topic um, that the viz is about. Uh, we can also use framing to make our heading stand out. So these are just simple lines um, that I've created in Tableau with a blank object. And it's a simple way to kind of frame and wrap your heading um, to also make it stand out. Um, one of the easiest ways from a design perspective to make your viz look more clean and polished um, is to use white or negative space. So allow your elements to breathe. So just like we need to breathe, so do the elements in our viz. Um, so we've got checklist item number two, um, ensure that your viz elements can breathe. So I just wanna share with you um, my first ever Iron Viz submission, and it was probably maybe my second viz ever. Um, if I were to do redo this viz, knowing what I know now about design, one of the things that I would do would be to incorporate more white space into the viz. So you notice there are, well, you may not notice, there are, you know, different sections of the viz, um, but they're not so apparent because everything kind of feels really cramped and really cluttered. Um, and, you know, on the sides there as well, it, the, you know, the text and the, the images and the, um, the charts all go to, you know, right to the end. Um, so, you know, padding on the sides would make this um, viz look a lot cleaner as well. So, you know, give the elements in your viz, so things like your charts, check, uh, text objects, headings, images, give them space, give them room to breathe. Um, you can do this by applying uh, padding in Tableau, or if you float your objects like I do, um, just allow some room um, between each object when you place them on the canvas. 
Um, use, of, use of white or negative space is important and it can create a really powerful effect. Um, incorporating negative space also helps reduce clutter um, and increases understanding as well. Um, so here's another INVIS entry. Um, it looks at maternal health around the world. And as you can see, I've added quite a lot of padding and quite a lot of breathing room around each element to create that negative space. And this viz was created um, three years after the previous viz that I just showed you. So the negative space here, it breaks up the elements and it provides for a much um, cleaner, less cluttered, cluttered design. But um, what would this viz look like if the white space wasn't there? So if the same amount of white space wasn't in the viz, um, you can see that the, the viz actually looks much like um, my very first Iron Viz submit submission. It looks um, you know, messier and more cluttered. And the use of white space um, in the final version helps with understanding. So when information is too densely packed, the graphic can feel overwhelming um, and be unreadable. So Vincent van Gogh says it perfectly. Uh, one can speak poetry just by arranging colors well. And this is especially true when it comes to uh, data visualization. So we have um, number three in our checklist, um, using a suitable color palette. Um, so as we know with color, um, less is more. You know, we don't need an overabundance of color to convey our story in our viz. We can use colors in our visualization to do things like draw attention to where we want um, the audience to look at, or we can use color as a visual cue. When selecting a color palette, um, opt for things like contrasting colors so our colors stand out, but you can also use complementary colors as well. And when choosing your color palette, consider any inherent social or cultural meanings that certain colors can evoke as well. Um, so this fabulous viz, um, not by me, but you can find on Tableau Public, um, it's by Tableau visionary um, Lindsay Betzendahl, um, and it shows the common meaning of certain colors. And um, what's more, you can kind of click on um, this little chart here and it actually shows you suggested ways on how you can incorporate these colors into your viz. So I highly recommend bookmarking this viz um, for you to use as a reference when you need inspiration for color or when you actually use, want to use color um, in your viz to evoke some sort of meaning or some sort of feeling in your audience. But we do have to remember that some colors have different meanings for different cultures. So uh, this particular viz from Information is Beautiful quite beautifully shows the meaning of certain colors uh, in different cultures. So for example, red um, in Western or American culture, so this A, the A here in this radio, um, you know, red can mean things like anger, danger, desire, heat, passion, amongst other things. But on the other hand, in the Asian culture, while red can also mean things like heat and passion, it can also symbolize um, something very different. It can also symbolize happiness and power. So we need to take things like this into account when choosing, um, you know, colors for our visualization, in particular, um, you know, choosing, choosing to use red. Um, if you do need help choosing an appropriate color, color palette for your viz, um, in addition to the resources I've just shared, um, there are other resources available that can help you do just that. Um, I do want to uh, talk about, you know, maybe a little less known color resources, uh, resource that I use a lot in data visualization. So um, Pantone is a really good resource and each year they release, you know, a color of the year, um, along with a bunch of other colors that go well with that particular color. Um, so for example, um, in the year 2020, classic blue was their color of the year. Um, and if we click on to look at classic blue and scroll down, it just gives you, um, you know, a whole bunch of other colors that we can use with that classic blue. Um, so this is a really good resource when it comes to color and color matching. Um, another fun fact, um, I actually use Pantone's um, 2022 color of the year, uh, very Perry as the basis of my Iron Viz winning entry. So it's this really nice purple color here that features prominently throughout, um, throughout the Viz. One other resource that I use for color inspiration as well um, is Google. So for example, if you know, I know I want to use um, a pastel color palette, I'll just go to Google, search for pastel color palette, and then I'll be presented with you know, hundreds of color options. So that's another way for us to kind of you know, get the colors that work well in our Viz. Um, so 
we know that numbers and ideas that are presented with pictures or, or images or visuals um, are better remembered than those without. That's the way our, our brains work. So how can we use images to help with recall and to help our viz uh, be more memorable? So there are many ways that we can incorporate images into a viz, um, but images need to be used strategically and intentional. So just like many elements um, to do with data viz, um, with images, um, less is more. So, you know, only use images um, if it adds to your story or your message. An overuse of images can distract your audience um, while also making your viz look, look cluttered. If you are using images in your viz, um, ensure that you use high quality images. So using low quality, quality images um, will make your viz look unprofessional. And additionally, um, any images that you use in your viz, they must be royalty free. Um, that is, you know, free for the public to use. Um, and don't forget to credit the source of your image as well. There are many resources available where you can source images from. Um, one website that I use a lot um, is Unsplashed. If you can't find an image that suits your needs, you can also create your own. Um, you know, this can be, fun, be done using Figma, Procreate, Illustrator, or, or even PowerPoint. Now, if you've seen um, some of my Tableau public work, you probably noticed that I tend not to use a lot of images in my work, um, but here are some examples where I've used images to kind of enhance the design and enhance the story. So in my 2021 IMVIS entry, um, I found an image of Unsplashed, um, this image of you know, water lilies on, in a pond, and I thought that that fit the theme of the viz really well. Um, the viz was about you know, me coming, going home and um, uh, visiting my homeland of Cambodia for the very first time. So when I found the image, I edited the image to match the color scheme of the viz and the style of the viz. Um, and I didn't want to distract the, the audience from you know, my message and my story and my analysis. So what I've done is I've just placed the image in the header of the viz and at the bottom to kind of create a frame, a nice little frame for the viz. Um, on the other hand, for example, uh, this particular viz, um, I found this really beautiful picture of the moon um, and I decided to build my entire viz around, around this particular image. Um, so the hero of the viz is the actual image. The, the data and the, the chart doesn't really do much, but it's the, the image that I wanted to showcase here. One thing um, that I've liked doing as well um, is creating my own images and my own drawings and adding them to my viz. I think it makes a viz um, unique and one of a kind, but I've only ever done that when it suits the theme or the style of the viz. So this particular viz looks at um, the Matilda effect. Um, we saw the heading of this viz earlier in another example. Um, and um, I decided to use an image of test tubes that I drew myself. Um, so you can see that here. Um, and the bubbles coming up from the test tubes um, represents a woman in science who's largely been forgotten in her field. And I thought the image went, went really well with the theme, the science theme. Um, and the color of the image is the same color used, you know, throughout the rest of the viz. And I also thought that it re worked really well with the hand-drawn like effect um, of the, the, the heading the font of the heading. Okay, next. Um, so great design is transparent, but we can also use transparency or different differing levels of opacity to enhance our data visualizations. Um, so checklist item number three, you know, experiment with, with opacity. Um, to me, the, uh, the default opacity of colors in Tableau can sometimes be a little jarring and, and hard on the eyes. So I like to um, reduce the saturation of the colors. You know, even if I'm bringing in my own color palette, I find that reducing the opacity of the colors really makes a huge difference. And, um, you know, in addition to reducing the, uh, the saturation or opacity of colors, it really helps, especially when you have overlapping marks in your chart, such as scatter plots. Um, and I'll show you an example of this in, in a little bit. We can also reduce the saturation of our background images um, if they're being used, as um, this will help you know, keep the focus um, on your charts and, and your text. And um, 
you know, you will need to experiment um, to see what works with the colors and the images that you've chosen and how it looks um, within the overall context of your viz. So here I've got a scatter plot which plots all of the vizes on my Tableau public profile. Um, and lo it looks at the size um, of each viz against a number of favorites. Uh, don't ask me why, this was all the data that I had on hand when I was putting together this, um, this, this presentation. So each dot here represents a viz. Um, and in this, this current version, um, the opacity um, is set to 100. And as you can really, as you can see, it's really kind of hard to discern um, the, the individual dots, um, especially when it's cluttered, especially around this particular section here. Um, but what if we make a small change to the color? So let's dial down the color to 70%. Um, and also let's add a border. And you can see here, um, that we can actually see, especially where we, we had our, our visas cluttered in the bottom corner here, we can actually see the individual visas now and the individual dots. Um, let's go back. And if we look at the two charts side by side, you can really see the difference um, this makes. So dialing down the opacity of your colors is a really quick and easy way to enhance the design and the understanding um, of the data and of your viz. So we know that Tableau is great for creating interactive charts and for enabling ways for our audience um, to interact with the data. But do we always need interactivity? Um, so I'm gonna be controversial here. And my opinion here is no, um, don't just rely on interactivity. Um, and what I mean is, what I mean by that is don't just rely on interactivity to lead the exploration if you have a clear message you wanna tell. Any interactivity you use um, should be done with intent. Um, so if in, in the case of the New York Times, it's been seen that only 10 to 15% of people actually click on buttons in their visualizations, um, even essential ones. So if you have a tooltip um, or a click to show prompt, you probably have to assume that your audience won't actually see or interact with them. So it's important to ensure that any important information is not hidden behind interactions. And you know, with the practice of sharing, you know, screenshots on with of your visas on social media, people tend to look only at the static screenshot. Um, many rarely click through to the the full viz um, and interact with the full viz. So just to give you an idea, um, I looked at the last five visas I shared on Twitter, and the viz that got the highest impressions to click through ratio um, was my Make Over Monday viz on school shootings. Now this got um, a four percent imp um, impression to click through ratio. And due to the trigger warning I had on the viz, um, I decided not to include a screenshot of the viz with the tweet, um, only the link to Tableau Public. The other four vizes um, I looked at, I had included a static screenshot and it had less than 1% of impressions clicking through to view the viz on Tableau Public. Now you can do this exercise with your own vizes so you can see um, exactly how many actually people actually click through to interact with your viz um, from your tweets. Um, interactions can also change your story as the power is in the hands of your audience. Um, but, you know, having said that, interactions can be powerful um, and, um, you know, it, it does need to be done, done intentionally for it to be powerful. So in this viz um, that I created that looks at period poverty around the world, um, I use interactivity um, to help show the audience the true cost of period products over a person's lifetime. So I actually included the ability um, for the audience to select the products um, that they wanted to, to see the total cost for, um, and also the ability to change the currency um, depending on where they are in the world. Um, but this uh, particular interaction doesn't change the message or the impact of the viz. Um, period products are still expensive regardless of what's used. Um, when I designed um, this viz to show my Tableau public journey, I also wanted to take the audience on a journey as well. So I used show hide containers to reveal each milestone at a time. So um, it's only after you click on the previous milestone that you're able to click through to the next one. Um, I had intentionally built this viz with this type of interactivity in mind um, to mimic the, you know, the passage of time and um, a journey taken all within, you know, theme of the viz. 
So I'm running out of time, but um, a quick uh, recap of some of the items on my go-to design checklist. Uh, you know, make sure your headings stand out, ensure that your elements have room to breathe, choose your color palette wisely, use images appropriately, experiment with opacity, and don't just rely on interactivity. And lastly, you know, design is just one um, aspect of your viz. Um, every great design begins with an even better story, and I can't wait to see yours. Thank you.